afternoon, everyone. Lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, it's uh, it, it's lovely to lovely to see. You. We've just just done a series of in person events, so it feels slightly strange to me going back to doing um, uh, online in Zoom. Um, but such is the world we're in. Hybrid is the way forward. Um, my name is Megan. Uh, I work in the um, data products and services team here at the audience agency. Um, my role is really, oh, so just to add as well for audio description purposes, I'm a white woman, I've got shoulder length, dark brown hair, um, and I'm wearing a yellowish mustardy kind of coloured cardigan. Um, my role is really all about helping people kind of use data in their practical day-to-day -day work um, and supporting people to kind of navigate their way through the kind of products and services that we've got um also to help maybe shape those products a little bit in response to what people like you are telling us what you would find useful um i'm joined today uh, it sounds a little bit like that announcement that you get at the, at the start of a flight isn't it on the flight deck today with me um but no i'm joined today by a couple of colleagues um first um uh samira who's in our support team um she's going to be looking after the chat so if people have questions as we go through, feel free to drop them in there. Samira will do her best to get back to you. Um, anything that we can't answer here and now, we'll pick up with you afterwards. Uh, we've also got um, my colleagues, Dan Cowley, research manager here, and Oliver Mantel, our director of evidence and insights, who I will let introduce themselves a little bit later when we get to the sections that are kind of most pertinent to them. Uh, final little bit of housekeeping, we have got captions available um, on this um, uh, session. They're those auto-generated Zoom captions. Hopefully we'll do the trick for you. Um, you just need to enable them using the, um, the button in your, in your Zoom control bar. I will try and speak slowly and clearly so that it doesn't mangle what I'm saying too much. So, so as well, we're... Um, we're looking to run for about an hour or so and kind of the key content in and out in the first hour. Um, after that, we will stick around and um, answer any questions. So if anyone does want to stay around just for, for a bit of a chat afterwards, um, we'll be here um, looking to wrap up around about 3, 3.15. Let's see how we go. Um, but certainly if you need to dash off early because you've got school run or whatever, that's, that's absolutely fine. So, um, just sort of why we're here, why we're doing this session now. Um, it's really about just sort of acknowledging that there's been quite a lot of change lately. Um, change seems to be a theme in the sector at the moment, doesn't it? You know, particularly over the last year or so, um, we're all still recovering from post pandemic, you know, cost of living crisis, changes in funding status, new MPO rounds, so much change. Audience behavior is changing. Um, and Likewise, we, as in the audience agency, have changed a lot as well over the last year or so. And we've, you know, had had a lot of, you know, some, some new things come on stream, some old things that we've let, let retire off into the sunset. So it just felt like a kind of good moment, really, to um, kind, of, kind of just talk through what we currently offer, what we have available. Um, but also hopefully to hear from you a little bit as well about what you might find useful going forwards, um, anything that you're hearing from clients or you feel you're feeling might be kind of the next thing on the horizon that, that we're going to need to be addressing and supporting those, those organisations we all work with together. Um, and just looking at ways we can respond um, to those as well. Um, those kind of changes that we're seeing that are still going on. It feels very, very uncertain at the moment and lots, lots of um, kind of question marks on the horizon. So let's all do our best to, you know, find our way through them together. So what we will cover today, um, I've just popped on the, the screen there, who we are, how we can help. Many of you may well know us, and I'm sure that's the case for, for, for lots. Um, for those who don't, we'll just a quick recap of who we are and what we do. Um, we'll talk through our key tools. Um, we're kind of known for two kind of um, key products, tools, services, as, as you, would, you would call them, um, being audience spectrum and audience answers. Audience answers being the evolution of audience finder, which many of you might know as well. We will have a look at how we can profile both audiences. And I'm, I'm going to say we use audiences in a very broad sense here. So if you do work for an organization that is, you know, perhaps doesn't have an audience in the conventional sense, I mean, perhaps a museum or a heritage attraction of some sort, where you possibly talk about visitors rather than audiences. 
I'm using the term interchangeably there, audience encompasses, audiences of all sorts, for all sorts of organisations, not just people who sit in rows in a theatre and clap politely at the end of a show. Um, so we'll talk about audience profiling, we'll talk as well about population profiling, I'm sure, you know, what's, you know, to kind of cover that area of how we can help you and your clients get to know the catchment area, the community, the target audience, however you're kind of um, framing that. Talk a little bit, bit about our kind of bespoke consultation work that we can do. Um, some conversation about uh, the sector-wide research and insights. This is the stuff that's that's kind of ongoing research into trends and what's going on out there in the kind of big picture um, sense. Um, and the stuff that can help you be keep really up to date with what's going on really. So, um, and to inform those conversations you're having with clients. And then, as I say, we'll do uh, we'll be around for some Q and A um, in the sort of final third of the session as well. If you do have questions as you go, please do drop them in the chat. As I say, um, Samira should be able to pick them up, but I'll try and remember to pause often enough so that if we need to need to address anything in there as we go through, we can. So, um, quick reminder of who we are: uh, we are the Audience Agency. Um, we're a non-profit charity. We're all about data and insights, but we're all about data and insights for the cultural sector that are relevant and useful. Um, not just data for data's sake, but data that can actually support both strategic planning and on the ground delivery of, um, you know, marketing campaigns, audience development work, fundraising campaigns, evaluation, et cetera, et cetera. We work with a huge variety, <coughs> excuse me, huge variety of organisations um, across the arts and culture sector that encompasses performing arts, visual arts, heritage, also local authorities um, uh, and the like. So we've got a real, real breadth of experience there with different organisations. What about audience development, experience design, evaluation, participation, We're evidence led and people centred, goes back to what I was saying, it's not just data for data's sake, but it's about data that is um, you know, relevant and useful in the, the world we're all operating in. Um, collaboration is what sits behind everything that we do. We're all about sharing knowledge, sharing data. Um, I very much hope that, that that's a principle that you know, can run through everything that we do in terms of sharing and, and you know, kind of you know, strength in numbers. Um, the more we share, the more we, we grow kind of collectively. Um, and as noted there, our signature tools are audience spectrum and audience answers. We have we have many others, but those are the ones we're going to kind of um, focus on today um, as kind of kind of key in this context. So what we can help you to do, this is not an exhaustive list. This is more like big picture, big picture stuff. Um, but fundamentally, we're here to help you um, do things like understand who an organization's current audience is. That whole idea of if you're, you know, um, creating a development plan or a, a, a campaign or a strategy for an organization that understanding where they're at right now in terms of their audiences, we can absolutely support with that. So looking at who the audience is, what do they do? How are they motivated? How do they behave? What do they want from a cultural slash heritage experience at that organization? We can absolutely support with that. Um, we can look at then the opportunities for strategic development. Once we know what an audience looks like, we can then look at you know what's going on in the in the um, the catchment area, the region. What are the trends? What's the population look like? Um, and where might the opportunities be? And we're talking opportunities there in the broadest sense. That could be an opportunity to grow income. It could be an opportunity to engage groups who are currently underrepresented, it could be around, you know, membership schemes and loyalty, depending on what the strategic objectives of that organisation are, we can we can help look at where the kind of direction of travel um, might be with a kind of data, data underpinning, you know, support of, a, a supportive framework of data so to support that. Um, and then because of tools like Audience Spectrum, uh, where we are learning and know a lot about how people behave, we can help with that that um, bit around recommending practical tactics and objectives and things that might help to achieve those those end goals for organisations. Totally get that you're you're absolutely 
knowledgeable and um you know have tons of experience in these areas too um and that's fine um so between us we can we can help with with that sort of thing um and we're never in a position of wanting to kind of compete with any of the work that you're doing or take over any of the work doing. it's just about supporting and adding adding data and evidence to to what you're kind of um recommending or suggesting to to your clients so in in practice oh sticking a pen in my hair that's not very cool is it um in practice that means um we can provide a bunch of um essentially off the peg reports um which uh can be tailored to your geographic area that you're working in or the type of organization that you're working for um we can also provide a bunch of more bespoke services as well um that are all about understanding an organization's audience and the wider population We've got tools and dashboards to help those organisations monitor audiences in the long term. So I don't know, perhaps you're going in and offering um, a, a fixed length, a fixed term project that is about, for example, I don't know, creating an audience development plan for a museum. We can then provide tools which once you finish that project and hand it over to them, that we can put the tools and dashboards in place to allow them to kind of monitor how they're moving along with that plan. Um, how their audiences are changing, growing, doing whatever they want them to do, how they can track that progress. Uh, we can offer one-to-one -one support from people who know the sector. Uh, most of us, you know, in fact, almost all of us have come from a background working in, in cultural organisations of one sort and another. Um, I like to say I'm a recovering marketing manager from uh, uh, performing arts venues. Uh, we've got a whole swathe of experience uh, across the team from, from people who've worked in all sorts of areas of the sector for a long time. So we, we, we get it. We understand where you're coming from. We understand what the challenges are. And then the final element is this ongoing research that we're doing into the wider trends in the sector, which Ollie will talk about in more detail a bit later. So... Um, Mentioned at the top that we were going to look at these kind of two key tools, um, audience spectrum and audience answers. You may well be pretty familiar with one or both of them. You may know nothing and that's fine. If you are very familiar, feel free to go off and make yourself a cup of tea and come back in five minutes. Um, but it's just worth reiterating because as I alluded to at the beginning, there has been a lot of change and a lot of development. Um, the fundamentals are still there. The fundamentals um, still stay in place. But we're very aware that, that keeping up with change can sometimes be a bit, uh, a bit exhausting when we've got so many other things going on. So just briefly to summarise what we're talking about when we're talking about these tools and what they look like now in their current iteration. Audience spectrum is the golden thread. And there is a very cheesy bit of clip art design there of a golden thread on this, on this slide. I take no responsibility. I take full responsibility. But anyway, um, it's... Well, what we're saying there is essentially audience spectrum is runs through uh, all pretty much all of our work. Um, it's a, a kind of key part of what we do has been for a long time and will continue to be for a long time. Um, so we'd really we're really keen for people to kind of get to know it, get to use it. The more people use it, the more people understand it, the better it gets. Um, so it runs through all of our support resources. The audience answers platform, any one-off profiling we do for you, any bespoke work we do for you, it's there in everything. You'll see it across the board in, in everything that we're doing. And hopefully that means it's useful. Um, so I'll just quickly recap what it is and, and how it works. Um, essentially it's a segmentation. Um, it's a segmentation of the UK population, the entire UK population, every household is allocated to one of these segments. And it's segmenting based on attitudes towards culture, um, engagement with culture, general lifestyles, habits, um, and you know, kind of how people operate in the world, particularly in relation to their engagement with arts and culture. So other segmentation tools and methods are available, of course, and we wouldn't for a second suggest that this is the only appropriate segmentation for any kind of cultural organization it's absolutely completely fine if if organizations or yourself are using different types of segmentation to build up a picture that's that's fine 
Um, we do obviously have a bias toward audience spectrum because it is very specific to arts and culture and it's it's ours <laughs> we think it's great um but seriously it's 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 got it's it's got a huge amount of um of benefit and use out there in the real world as well so we are when we're talking about segmenting obviously segmentation can take lots of different forms it you can segment based on uh, demographics, on age, on ethnicity, on gender, uh, you can segment based on behaviours. Um, and that's all absolutely fine um, and has huge benefit. But what audience spectrum is doing is it's taking all of these elements into account. So it's acknowledging, for example, that um, one one 35 year old woman does not live her life and behave in exactly the same way as every other 35 year old woman. It's acknowledging that 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 you know people are multifaceted and complex, and you know live their lives in very um, you know kind of dynamic, complex ways. So it's taking into account behavioural factors, behavioural specifically around arts engagement, um, demographic factors that age, social grade, life stage does come into it as well, um, but it's not the be all and end all. Geography: where are people? Where are they likely to live and work? and attitudes what are their what are their values and their beliefs and their motivators and their drivers and their barriers and all that sort of sort of stuff is is coming into play there as well um very briefly these are the data sources we're using to build up audience spectrum um Experian data about wider consumer behavior the census um for, for core demographics the 2021 census um, uh, data has fairly recently been released, um, so we're now using incorporating that into, into much of our work. Um, taking part, the National Participation Survey, behavioural data that we've got from our own Audience Answers data set, which is an enormous data set built up over many, many years of, um, um, of ticket bookers and um, audience surveys. And the cultural participation monitor and other kind of long term work that we're doing around cultural engagement. So it goes back to the idea that it's a kind of multi multi stranded, multi faceted segmentation that's not just looking at a very narrow, a narrow element of of, of people's lives. It's taking all of that into into account. What makes it unique? Um, it's the only geolocation segmentation for culture in the UK. I'm really pleased I managed to read that without getting my tongue tied because that's that's a lot of lot of words. Um, Every household's got a tag, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, so it's predicting their behaviour and what they're likely to do. It's tested for accuracy, gets what people actually do, this is what we predict they'll do. It's based on real data um, and it's relevant to all organisations. We, we're not just looking at how people behave, for example, in terms of the performing arts or the visual arts or museums. We're looking at the whole, the whole, the whole lot. Um, and also taking into account as well um, elements of cultural engagement that perhaps we, don't, we, especially those of us working in the subsidised sector, don't think of immediately. Um, so things like, you know, people who, who get involved in craft circles, knitting groups, church choirs, that sort of thing. Um, it's still cultural engagement, but it's not, it's not kind of what we in the subsidised sector necessarily instantly think of when we're talking about engagement. Um, but it's just building up that broad picture of, of how people are living. And it's actionable. It points you towards actual practical things you can do with that information. I'm not going to go into detail on these. It's quite small, quite difficult to read. Totally appreciate that, but it's more indicative rather than um, uh, for a close study, I think. Um, but essentially, there are 10, 10 categories, 10 segments. Um, a couple of names of these have changed in the last couple of years. Um, so if you're like me and you grew up on the era of talking about um, Facebook families when you worked in a venue, those are now frontline families. Uh, and supported communities are a new name as well. But essentially 10 top, top segments that have um, you know, stood the test of time, been around for a long time. And they go from most engaged metroculturals at the top to um, supported communities who tend to be the least engaged towards the other end. It's literally a spectrum between those uh, running through. And each of those 10 segments is further subdivided into two. So we've got 20 subsegments altogether. Uh, general gist here is that um, the um, subsegments uh, 
have the same general behavioural trends. So a commuter, commuter land culture buff C1 and a commuter land culture buff C2 have the same general um, characteristics. There are some differences in how each of those subgroups behave. And sometimes in the sort of life stage and age of those subgroups. So this subsegmentation is dead useful if you're um, if you're finding that an audience is really dominated by one group. This just helps you get in a little bit deeper, and you might find that sixty percent of your audience is metroculturals, but actually it's turning out that within that, forty percent are M one, sixty percent are M twos, vice versa. So it just allow for a next level of of, of um, analysis. There are accompanying pen portraits um, on audience answers, which I'll touch on in a sec. Uh, the pen portraits cover lifestyles, location, cultural engagement, barriers and motivations, how those people engage digitally, um, how to reach them, getting practical, um, and things like their willingness to become donors as well um, is also covered in there. Much more than that in those profiles, that's just a, a quick, quick overview. There are also motivation guides. Uh, these are these are new, new and shiny. They're free. They're just downloadable from our website. And they're kind of like a condensed version of the pen portraits for each segment, but getting really, really practical. Um, so they're literally a downloadable PDF that tell you an experience seeker is this sort of person. This, these are their values and beliefs. This is how they live. This is where you might find them. And these are the sorts of very practical things you could do to actually engage that segment and, and find them out there in the real world. <clears throat> that might cover program, the sort of program they'd be tempted by. It will cover marketing tactics, communications methods, um, the sort of add-ons that, that might kind of tempt them through the door or over the threshold, as well as program. You know, maybe it's a it, you know, it's a it's a it's a talk or a um a, a drinks offer or whatever it is which of those segments are most likely to be, be swayed by those sorts of things and what sort of things could those be. Definitely recommend having a look at those. We'll send out some links to all of these after the session. So don't worry about going searching the internet right now for them. We will, we will point you in the direction as well. So anything, Samira, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check. I hope you're still there at the moment. Any questions or anything to pick up on, on audience? No, nope. You've Lovely. explained that very well. No one's asking any questions, so mm. you're all good. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so that's audience spectrum. Just a reminder that it's there and it will continue to be there. And um, please go and use it because <laughs> it's um, it's very much a kind of uh, very actionable tool. Um, audience answers, uh, just to kind of touch on that. So if you've worked with this over, gosh, the last... 10 plus years, um, you have probably, I'm sure, encountered um, a service called Audience Finder, which was a essentially a dashboard, which had, um, an, had the op option for an organization to feed in a, its ticket data if they issued, issue tickets. And also if they are running a, an audience survey with this to also feed in that survey data. All that data would be processed in the background and output through the audience finder dashboard, which an organization would have set up personalized for them. They'd see all of the metrics of what was going on with their, with their audience based on that ticket data, based on that survey data, uh, presented an output to them. Um, it would be, it would offer some options for benchmarking against uh, other organizations in the region, against general population in the region. Uh, and it's it ran in its in that form for for a really long time. I certainly I certainly came of age using it uh, quite a lot. That uh, audience finder we sent it off into its retirement in uh, April May of this year. It just sort of run its course really um, and was due due a bit of a bit of a refresh and a spring training and an upgrade. Um, and we have for a number of um, well years really been working in the background on a successor anyway, um, a, a new platform called Audience Answers. Um, so a number of people may have seen that as well, even before Audience Finder was uh, sent off into its glorious retirement. Um, so Audience Answers is, is not a straight replacement, um, but it does perform a lot of those similar functions as well as other things that Audience Finder did. 
it builds on that development of audience finder, uh, takes what we learn from doing that and you know uses that in its kind of creation. And essentially it's not just a platform. There is a platform, but it's not just a platform. Um, but it's a platform plus a bunch of other services that help people get to grips with audience data and using data in their day-to-day -day work fundamentally. Um, just note there on costs, a lot of elements of it are still free. Uh, some elements are paid for, uh, but we try and keep it as, as reasonable as possible. Uh, and prices are a little bit different if you're based in an organization in Wales or Scotland due to our funding arrangements in those countries. So the, very briefly, the kind of principles informing audience answers um, is about something being actionable. Um, it's about data being actually useful, uh, not just a number, but how can you use that number? It's about adapting to what is user first, adapting to what you need. It's not just collecting the data that you need to tick a box for a funder, although that is a function within it as well. It's flexible. Um, it allows for the fact that we're a very diverse sector. We've got lots of different things going on. Different people need different things. And it's networked. It's going back to that idea of, uh, we touched on at the beginning, that we're all about collaboration and sharing and generally being stronger together rather than independently. I will briefly touch on all the elements that make up answers. I would say if you want to explore it for yourself, we can facilitate that. Um, a lot of it you can access without a login, um, but we can also, if you'd like to have a chat with us separately and we do a screen share and show you around some of the tools that are available, it's absolutely fine. Get in touch, give us a shout. Um, so, the um some of the say some of the elements have stayed the same from the old audience finder days um, some of them are new and different um so one of them that has to many respects stayed the same is the facility to survey an audience uh back in the day this used to be a um very sort of standardized survey that was primarily fulfilling requirements for funders let's be honest it was ticking boxes for um what's what the arts councils wanted from um organizations but there was the option to add uh additional questions in as well we kept the kind of core of the survey much the same as it always was so it asks us there's a standard set of questions that allow for benchmarking comparison but there's also still the option to add in a lot more additional questions as well. They can be templ templated questions, they can be bespoke questions. You know, there's a lot of flexibility in those surveys. They can be set up as post-visit surveys or in-person surveys. They tick the boxes for the major UK funders, Arts Council England, um, Creative Scotland, Arts Council Wales, and they can be analysed in a dashboard, just the same as in the old audience finder days. So surveys are still a thing. Talk to us if we can help with a survey. Ticketing, again, this was something that was carried over from the old Audience Finder original days. Uh, essentially an organization that issues tickets can link their ticketing dashboard, their ticketing dashboard, their ticketing system to audience answers. And then by some magic and witchcraft, that ticket data is passed through to audience answers on a regular basis. It's processed, it's output into a dashboard. So this gives um, an organisation somewhere very quick and easy to see headline statistics about what's going on in their, it, with their audiences. Um, that's been, uh, that's back in audience answers. It's automated for Spectrix tickets of and Tessitura users. Other systems can integrate. Um, we're bringing them on, on stream at the moment. So, you know, it's no, no ticketing system is a, an outright no. Um, please talk to us if you use an alternative system. There's a free element to this. There's a free overview dashboard, uh, which covers those kind of real headline features. And there, the more in depth you want to get, we can then move on to some um, upgraded packages that do have some costs attached. As I said before, we try and keep them as reasonable as possible. Um, they offer the opportunity to benchmark against organisations of a similar size, um, see how you're, you're kind of comparing there, and they offer the op option to map catchment area, uh, where are your bookers coming from and what does that look like. So ticketing, very much still a thing, very much still there. Have a practice about it if that's of interest. Um, real, uh, networks. 
this this is something we've we've always run um but they're kind of coming to the fore a little bit more these days i think recognizing that again as i touched on at the beginning there's so much change in the sector um you know so much upheaval in many ways and that collaborating can can you know really be really be so valuable um to organizations so we do have the facility and invite people to come and talk to us about joining a network starting a network um having an idea for a network that they find useful and those networks can be really based on on anything that that you feel be useful really uh we have networks that are based geographically um there's there's major networks in major cities um you know um yorkshire um there's a network manchester liverpool um it can be based on type of organization type of art form perhaps a group of of museums want to get together and you know they're all kind of doing the same sort of thing but they're in different parts of the country they want to share information um share ideas share data from their audiences we can facilitate that they're very bespoke very adaptable to what um that group of organizations would like and would find useful so it's just something to bear in mind, um, particularly for, for people such as yourselves who are probably working with a number of different organisations at the same time. If we can help bring those together and facilitate some sharing and collaboration, we're really up for having those conversations. And it all sits under that audience answers kind of banner, really. Uh, so I'm rattling through, there's quite a lot here, I should say, we are going to send out the slides afterwards, so if there's any information here that you, you're, not, you're not getting, or whatever, that's absolutely fine, we will send the slides. Um, a very, very cool little little add-on, perhaps, for some organisations that are working it might be, might be this. Um, this is what we call audience spectrum licensing. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the term licensing because it can be, I think it's a little bit, it's not super descriptive. Essentially what it is, it's tagging. It's tagging of bookers or customer records. So if an organisation you're working with has a list of postcodes, a list of people that have booked a ticket or engaged in some way, and those are stored on a CRM or a ticketing system, we can... Um, tag all of those customers with an audience spectrum type. And then that is for the duration of your subscription that is live updated on either a daily, if you're on Spectrix, or quarterly for everybody else, quarterly basis. So you'd look at your customer record in your booking system and it would have an audience spectrum sub segment and sub segment appended to it, just as it would have the customer's postcode or the customer's booking history or the customer's name. Uh, what that obviously means is you can then look at um, doing some quite clever bespoke mailing list building. You can create a, um, a uh, for example, an email campaign very much targeted to a particular segment that uses the kind of language that we know that segment respond to, that offers the kind of product we know that segment like. You could do some bespoke reporting for, you know, and we know organisations use it um, in their post event reporting quite a lot when they do that kind of summary of how a production at a theatre went they'll also include the audience was x proportion this segment y proportion that segment so it's got really got massive potential for an organization that has got the the kind of the, the foresight to, to really take it on board um, and we're really happy to talk to anyone um, who's interested in taking this up and explore how it might be useful for them. Um, so if if you are in a position of, of, of feeling that might be useful for organisation you're work, working with, just do tell us so we can have a kind of, um, you know, set up a conversation with them about how they could use this and how this could work in their system for them. Um, costs are based on how many records we've got, what system they're on. Um, so it's it's a very flexible, flexible tool and just something that's got a lot of potential as well. So uh, final, I think this is the final one on this section. Um, again, coming under that audience answers banner um, is a new service, which we're calling Coach. Um, for, you know, uh, you know, sporting metaphor, why not? Um, and essentially, this is all about kind of going beyond providing a bunch of data. This is really getting into that 
how can we help people on a very practical human human to human kind of level um because as i mentioned before a number of us have worked in the sector we're familiar with the sector no way around and we know that sometimes it can all just be a bit overwhelming um data data can be intimidating it can be um you know a big mountain for a lot of people to climb in many ways and we're here just to have a chat and just to help guide people through that if that we're very aware that this is obviously territory that you may well be working in as well it's absolutely fine but if perhaps once a project's ended you wanted to recommend that they they continue to speak to us great um it, it's you know just an opportunity to have a chat about whatever might feel most useful and um supportive um i for example, I've, I'm speaking to an organisation in the next couple of days who've never collected any audience data at all, and they're just completely flummoxed by where to even start. The other end of the scale, I have a very large, well-developed organisation who's very sophisticated in their use and really wants to get into the nitty gritty of what does this mean? How can we work with this? We can have a, an hour or so in a call where we look at, the, look at it together. Two heads are usually better than one and just offer that kind of practical practical support for people really so that's there that's the service um very happy to talk to anyone about that great anything question wise to pick up on at all here's looking at you samara sorry couldn't click mute or mute fast enough we're just having right. a conversation about a network at the moment um Matthew great. Asked a question about is there an everyday creativity group um oh at the moment um i'm just replying off the back of ollie um there isn't such a network but as ollie says there could be um so matthew please do reach out to us and we can look up what we can create to help you with that love that yeah great yeah always up for those conversations those ideas so yeah fab lovely okie dokie um so uh, so megan there was another question about the coach service sure um, Far away. I think it was um, Joe saying, what is the charge for the coach service? What is the charge? Yeah. Um, it's £150 for a 90 minute session. Um, standard, standard flat charge, um, no, matter, no matter who you are and what you do. Hopefully that covers that. Grand. Anything else or shall we, shall we move on? I will move on in that case. Um, so that was a fairly, fairly lengthy, sorry about that everyone, hopefully you're still awake and still with me, rundown of those two key areas that, that we would consider key tools. Audience spectrum, golden thread running through everything, uh, audience answers, the, the platform plus the associated services that are, are, are in place and are continuing to develop. Um, hopefully that's kind of helped put them in context, help them make a little bit more sense. Um, we talk about them a lot, so just wanted to kind of position those really. Um, next, next couple of little sections. Um, we we'll start with going back to what we talked about at the beginning. Um, we can support with this whole business of understanding who a current audience is, and then looking at who a potential audience could be. Um, so, on a very practical level, just look at the whole understanding who a current audience is lots of different ways we can do that um a lot of it you know is is really kind of enabled if we've got postcodes postcodes are tremendously useful uh postcodes that have been gathered through a booking that's been made or through um uh, an audience survey that's been carried out or indeed just a, a capture at an event of a bunch of postcodes where do people come from that's absolute gold dust to us and there's loads we can do with it so if you do have postcodes, we can take those postcodes, we can provide a profile of that audience by audience spectrum type. We can also add in mosaic profiling, if that's useful. That's a, um, you know, a tool that you're familiar with. We, we can use that as well. We can provide uh, location mapping, drive time and distance analysis. We can look at some benchmarks to regional populations or, or regional kind of aggregates of what's going on in that in that area. We can look at frequency loyalty. And I guess the key thing here that is a lot of a lot of this is available um, in in an audience answers dashboard. So back in the old days, for example, if you had that ticketing connection into audience finder, you would get that stuff through your 
um, through your dashboard. Yes, you can still get that through your dashboard if you're, if you're linked up, but you don't have to be. Um, if you literally just got a list of postcodes, we can work with that. <clears throat> so please don't feel that it's kind of limited to people who are subscribed to that, that ticketing um, analytics dashboard. We can do stuff outside of the dashboard. <clears throat> All of this is possible um, outside of the answers dashboard. We... <sighs> Maybe not. Um, surveys, as I mentioned before, surveys is very much still part of the offer. We can work with you to design a survey that really gets to the information that you um, need for your client, for the organization you're working with. We can look at those surveys can cover demographics, motivations, experience, all that, that stuff that you can't really get from analyzing a ticket booking. We can, we can look at exploring through a survey. We can set up the survey for you. We can you know, actually provide a link to a post-visit survey or a tablet-based survey or a PDF survey to print out and fill in on the day. Um, if you're designing your own survey, you don't want to do it with us, we can support on um, advising on good practice on survey design. Um, we can suggest good practice data collection methodologies, train, help train your field workers. You don't have to be using one of our surveys. You can do your own thing and just come to us for a bit of a bit of a sense check and a bit of support. And of course, we can help analyze that data you've collected. Um, if it's one of our surveys, it will go into an audience answers dashboard and just be there for you to analyze you know, at your own, own time and leisure. Um, if you've collected survey data elsewhere, you can send it to us and we'll create a report out of it. Um, if it's if you know if you're struggling with capacity to do that sort of thing, very happy to take that on and, and, and do that for you. So message there, we can help with surveys. It doesn't have to be one of ours. Have a chat to us about surveys um, and what we can do. So that's the kind of understanding the current audience, the current position, where are we now, who are we engaging? Then we can look at population, we can look at potential, we can look at where are the opportunities to develop. Um, you'll be delighted to know that in a second, I'm going to pipe down and hand over to my colleague, Dan, who's hopefully still there, to talk in a little bit more detail about some of the reporting we can do here. But essentially, this is all about um, understanding the community and the context that an organisation is working in. Um, who and where are the underserved or less engaged communities in that area? Who and where are the people with potential to be big spenders, um, to be loyal customers? Uh, to be coming more often than they currently are, for example, or spending more money than they currently are. And perhaps what are the unique challenges in that area? What makes uh, this little patch of the country unique and different? And, you know, what do we need to do to kind of address that and overcome some of those barriers? So it's all about looking at the, the big picture, the big picture stuff here. Through a mix of some... Um, sort of off, off the peg type reports and also some more bespokey type work. And you'll notice I use terms like bespokey type work because I'm not super expert on a lot of this. So I'm very glad Dan is here to, to pick up on this in a second. But what I can touch on first um, is just if you, if you a little bit like, oh, I don't know that I wanna go down the whole paying for a report route just yet. In the Audience Answers Dashboard, um, there is uh, this free tool available, um, which is a map of the whole UK. Um, and it looks at audience spectrum segmentation of the population of the UK. So you can delve into an area by, um, by postcode, you know, zoom right in and look at what's the breakdown of audience spectrum types in the area, just to get a kind of top level starting point on thinking about um, the local area that you're that you're working in. I would definitely recommend going and have a look at that. It's one of my favorite things on audience answers, but that's because I love maps and I'm a bit of a nerd. So well aware it might not be everyone's thing. I love it. Um, it's just a little, little um, zoom in of what that looks like. So I am now going to hand over to Dan to talk a little bit more about population profiling, if that's okay. Fine by me. We'll see if it's okay with everybody else in a minute. But uh, yeah, okay. So um, yeah, population profile reports are one of the uh, one of the the products, tool services that we use a lot across work that we do directly with with clients or 
uh, with uh, freelancers and, and consultants to help organizations understand um, more about typically their, their local area and who lives there, uh, but they can be used for, for describing the population of any area. Um, you might be more familiar with area profile reports. Um, population profile reports are an evolution of, uh, of area profile reports, uh, which I think, I think APRs have been around certainly as long as I have. So 15 odd years, 20 years, maybe longer. Um, so they're quite a, quite a widely used uh, product. And PPRs basically take everything that people have found useful about uh, APRs and add more stuff and uh, make that stuff easier to, uh, to understand. So yeah, broadly speaking, what they do is tell you about the population of a given area. And that area could be um, a local authority or a region or a group of local authorities or everybody that lives within a half hour drive of a particular place or everybody that lives within three miles of the boundary of a particular place. Basically, any way that you can imagine drawing a shape on a map or selecting areas on a map, those can be used as the basis for uh, a PPR. And within it, you get um, census data from the 2021 census. Um, if the area is England and Wales, we're still waiting for the, for the uh, equivalent Scottish census data to come out. But as soon as that's available, they, that'll be incorporated as well. Um, and you also get audience spectrum. So you get an audience spectrum profile for the population of your selected area. Um, and you also get some other cultural and pastime uh, data. So if you ever wanted to know what proportion of people within 20 minutes of Lewisham do Sudoku, you'll need a PPR and that, that'll give you the answer along with loads of other, loads of other things. Um, and not only do they describe the population of your particular target area, they also uh, compare uh, another population with your target population. So for example, if you are helping an organization um, plan where to tour, or if they were going to, let's say, Norfolk and wanted to understand not only the population of Norfolk, but how uh, that population compares to the East of England as a whole uh, and how it's distinctive. So are there any particular audience spectrum segments which are super present in Norfolk, um, more so than you find in East England as a whole, you can do that. So you, you can always index your area of interest against a wider area to give some context to whether a particular number is, is high or low, essentially. Um, is it worth me just flashing up the actual, like the output? You get, you know, yeah, you've got one to hand. That'd be great. Let's do that. Okay. Let me right. let me stop sharing and uh, then it can be all yours. Great. Okay. okay. I've not used Zoom for a, a few uh, a few months. Let's let's see if this actually got works. This. Fine. <laughs> okay. Let's let's believe in ourselves. Okay. So <laughs> do, 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 do. so this is shoving, I believe. Can we all see a PPR? Great. Okay. Cool. So this is uh, what PPR looks like. So you can see the area it's describing. So this is describing 15 minutes from a postcode in Bristol compared to a 45 minute drive from the same area in Bristol. So straight up, you can see what distance that covers. So that in and of itself could be quite a useful thing to, to get a sense of um, what drive times and distances are like in your area. There's all sorts of explanations about the various is in here and what it means but the real good stuff is on the following tabs where you can see for example the audience spectrum profile of uh, adults age 15 plus in the area and how that compares to that wider area so here we can see that there are proportionally three times as many metroculturals in our target area as there are in our base area uh, thanks to these handy indexes uh, and we have that for sub-segments as well. 
And we also have Mosaic Group in here, which is a similar to audience spectrum, but a more um, tends to be more commercially focused, widely used by some of your favorite companies like uh, Tesco's and, uh, well, let's say um, Exxon, you know, the Exxon Oil Corporation, all those kind of guys love Mosaic. Um, but it can be really useful when thinking about talking to some sense. And also local authorities quite often use Mosaic as well. Um, we have census data, so all the core, um, all the core census variables around demographics um, and protected characteristics, um, as well as stuff about um, how many households there are with children, um, different types of communal establishments in the area, housing tenure, health, community, uh, employment, language. That can be really useful when developing, uh, developing product. Um, and yeah, all, all the all the good census stuff. Um, I'll stick some links to this in the chat in a minute so you can have a browse at your leisure. Um, and they've also got LMSE data room, which is local market size estimates. So this is all model data, um, which uh, Experian do some fancy modeling to estimate what proportion of people in a given area do particular things. So we have stuff about arts and culture. So we can see, in our 15 minute drive, people, broadly speaking, do more or more likely to do cultural stuff than people in that wider 45 minute area. Um, in particular, what's the highest index? Contemporary dance. So there we go. Um, and then we also have stuff about museums and heritage, cinema, wider activities like coding or genealogy or horse riding. Placing a bet, loads of uh, different pastime things, which can be again useful for thinking about uh, collaborations between the uh, the arts organisation and other local organisations where there might be particular opportunities. Um, and we've got some sports as well, so we can see what percentage of people take part in MMA, for example. Or snooker, choose your sport; it's probably in there. And then finally, we've got some media stuff of so what newspapers, if any, are people reading um, in the area compared to others. So, yeah, that is a, uh, a PPR. You also get um, a PDF. Let me just share that really quickly, which has all the, all the, same, um, all the same information, but just, just laid out a little bit more... Um, What's the word? A bit more friendly, friendlier, a little bit more friendlier. That's a terrible sentence, but uh, let's have a look at one of those. So this hopefully is showing up. Great. So this is um, basically, yeah, PDF of all the same sort of stuff, but it also includes some nice summaries. So these are, these are basically designed to help people who might be less confident about using data, interpreting spreadsheets and stuff, and to pull out the key points and differences um, between your target and base area in a slightly nicer way. So take it good for, um, yeah, for sharing with board members or just getting the same sort of information, but in a slightly nicer, slightly nicer format. So I think that's probably it for sharing. Yep, I'll let you explore that um, as you see fit whenever you like. Um, and the final thing to say about um, population profile reports is they're available, yeah, there's like a, a deeper level you can go to called population profile report pluses. And those have all the same information, but as well as describing it for the target area as a whole, it breaks that target area down into all of its constituent wards, or local authority wards. So you can see within an area, which are the neighborhoods that have the highest numbers or proportions of people in each of those demographic groups or those leisure groups or audience spectrum segments, all of that stuff, um, which can be really useful for targeted marketing and understanding, um, yeah, where there might be particular, particular opportunities. That's probably everything 
everything that is possible to say about PPRs. Um, but yeah, I'd encourage you to have a little look and think how they might be uh, might be useful um, for, for you and your uh, your clients. Thank you, Dan. Uh, much more articulately put than I could have could have done it. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, we do have examples of all those reports on our website as well. So that those those ones that Dan was sharing are available for you to have a look at as well. Um, I should say the the ones with that break it down, the plus ones that break it down by by ward and and, and that level of detail. I found them back in the day um, do it when I was doing practical marketing stuff so useful because I could literally look down that sheet and say, hmm, my target group are young people under the age of 26. And these are precisely the places in my over interest where I'm going to find them. So then I could say to the you know street teams who are distributing flyers go to these places a very very kind of precision level. Um, so while the kind of standard level PPRs are brilliant, and they give you that kind of top level view. If you want something that's going to really like help plan tactics, um, I'm all about the, the ones that break it down to that um, that plus level because you, you get really into the into the detail of it. If you're into that kind of thing, if your clients are into that kind of thing, they might just want the top level, but, but they are there. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm going to very swiftly um, hand over again to Ollie, if that's okay, to talk about um, the evidence and insights work which he leads on, which is all about kind of what's what's the kind of big picture, what's going on in the in the sector. So um, the, the floor is yours, Ollie. Oh, um, yep, yeah, sounds good. I was going to say, can you click on? But you have, no, just like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is really just very briefly to draw your attention to a range of things, um, most of which are entirely free, um, that you might find helpful um, in your work, um, and that's available through the Audience Answers platform, albeit um, what, we, what we call sort of in front of the login. So if you go to Audience Answers, you can click on it and you can get to it without having to actually have a registered account. Um, and essentially, so there's a page there that summarises a whole load of insights about audiences in different formats, um, particularly grouped in terms of particular regions and nations or particular art forms. Um, and then we also have some sort of key priority topics that we have, we try to kind of um, gather together information on, for example, stuff around digital, stuff around um, inequality and so forth, um, and cost of living as a, as a current one. Although hopefully at some point that's going to go away as the most pressing issue we can at least dream. Um, so other things that are on there which might be helpful, um, there's a sales tracker, which is, well, that's several, um, sales trackers. Um, so it's like an overall summary um, uh, dashboard that looks at uh, overall sales from audience answers. Uh, there's also one specific to Scotland, which is why it's, a, why it's a plural. Um, so again, that might be helpful as kind of background information about sort of if you're looking at a particular organization, how that's going, just to put it in a bit of context to say, well, actually, you know, if you filter for this art form or this place or whatever, um, that's how that's looking. Um, the other sort of really key bit of work to draw attention to is the cultural participation monitor. So that's a nationally representative uh, panel survey, um, which is designed to be representative by region and age and gender and ethnicity and audience spectrum um, to give like a really broad view of the UK population. Asking about some things consistently, but also some particular sort of hot topics um, of the, of the moment. Um, and in terms of that, either you or particular um, sort of clients you're working with, particularly sector bodies, I would suggest, um, could find it useful to uh, become a supporter of that um, survey and therefore be able to include some particular questions on a topic of your uh, particular interest. Um, and again, we can work with you to work those questions up and then to you know, actually run the survey, provide some analysis, um, and indeed sort of you know, share and report on that stuff as well. Um, but we also, we share um, overall headline findings um, to sort of be, be available for the sector in general anyway. Um, it's also worth flagging that we're currently exploring the option um, to be able to get access to the kind of raw data behind the participation monitor for particular sub-segments. Um, so um, if you're particularly interested in a particular group, whether it's people living in urban areas or people of a particular age or whatever, um, Come and talk to us because we, we maybe we can sort of access um you can pay to access certain slices of the participation monitor data and put that in that in context um so that's participation monitor um if you have hot topics you think that we could or should be talking about 
um, again, just let us know because it's always good to know what um, what people think is most pressing. Um, and of course, we then do a variety of other events, um, most notably our um, tea break sessions for every month, which are a fairly informal way to share bits of bits and pieces of things that we've discovered or we've been working on. Um, so do come along to those. Next one's about Panto and Christmas audiences and things, uh, where you'll get to see me in, on 13th of December trying very hard not to make all of the obvious jokes and probably failing. Um, but yes, so there's that to look forward to. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially, just really, if you have a question or if you're looking at background information on a particular uh, theme, uh, that's often quite a good place to look. Um, so yeah, so do so do keep that keep that bookmarked. Uh, as I say, it's freely available on that page, um, and or you can come to us with questions as well if there's things that you think it'd be useful for us to do a little bit of work to support you on um, as well. So yeah, I think that's an initial initial summary, at least anyway. Fab. Thank you. Um, I'm going to come to the Panto session and keep track of how many Panto funds you are dropping in. It's very important. Thank you for, for reminding me of that. <laughs> um, but no, this is, they're, they're really good sessions, actually, those tea breaks. Um, I quite often um, drop in or watch the recordings back um, just, just to kind of get that overview of what's going on. Um, and you can feel really smug that you know the big picture and, and what's happening and uh, you know, beyond the kind of the kind of current small or, you know, small world that you might be operating if you're just working for an organisation or thinking about one organisation. That big picture stuff is really, really helpful. So thank you both to um, Anna and Ollie there, um, both articulated those areas much, much better than I could have done. Um, so very briefly touch on, um, obviously kind of what we've kind of run through there has been some, some, some fairly kind of standardized products and services that we offer um, that, you know, are kind of more sort of off the peg type solutions. Um, we do very much work with people and invite people to come and work with us on a more um, bespoke basis. We've got a, uh, a team of really experienced consultants um, who be who are always happy to have a chat about um, projects and uh, potential to work together on things, um, which can encompass audience development um, in, in, the, in the broader sense, looking at um, strategy, training, community engagement, um, evaluation. Um, place, um, digital strategy. We've got specialists in all of these areas and we're really happy to, to have a chat with you um, about, about how we can support that. Um, fully appreciate there are links there to more about our services and more about our team that mean nothing when you're just looking at a screen share on Zoom, but when we send you the PDF of these slides, they will link through to, um, to finding out more about um, the kind of um, expertise and experience that we've got within the, within the team. <coughs> and we're happy to talk to you um, about as well on a more kind of bespoke basis maybe i'll just say really quickly yes please i do. love uh making maps and using the various fancy tools that we have at our disposal um one, one of the, the the handy things about working at the audience agency is because there's a uh, you know we're a fairly 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 big organization um it means we can have uh access to some fancy tools which are quite hard to um to just like find the money to to have licenses for or the, the time to, to learn how to use so um we're really happy to uh to share those kinds of tools as well so like for example if you have some data that you'd like to map that's something we can help with so uh or uh, if you have a bunch of survey data that just doesn't really make any sense and it's all getting a bit too much we're happy to just kind of drop it and just do little bits of work uh, to help make your lives easier as well so uh, yeah if you ever kind of yeah i think this is, this is reasonable to say if you're ever struggling with anything you can just give us a shout and we might be able to um either point you in the direction of some resources that can help or um oh yeah help you out more actively with just dropping in on little little bits of work yeah Good point. Thank you. Yeah, it's it, when we talk about bespoke work, we're not just talking about huge projects. We can we can really get into the kind of quite small scale, everyday mundane stuff very happily as well. So um, yeah, please do please do talk to us. Um, which leads very nicely on to next steps. You'd be pleased to know that I'm not going to talk for too much longer. Um, but just to kind of. Um, some thoughts here about so, so we're really keen to kind of keep working with 
freelancers, consultants, agencies, etc. Um, on a on a longer term basis. Um, you know, I'm sure there's lots we can learn from each other and lots of support we can provide for each other. So we are kicking some random ideas internally here, um, which we'd love to hear um, your thoughts, your feedback on, um, kind of which I've kind of summarised on this um, this slide here, just around future direction of travel, potentially, if there was interest. Um, so, for example, if you are working with a lot of clients, buying a lot of things like population report profile reports, PPRs, et cetera, et cetera, we could certainly look at, um, you know, kind of discounting, commission-based work. Um, we can look at how we can sort of package that up for you. Um, so essentially, you know, you would kind of resell our products and we'd, we'd work out some advantages for you for doing that. Um, we can provide um, assets and, you know, supporting materials if that would be useful for you to kind of um, facilitate these conversations with clients. We can help with training support. Um, but those are just our ideas. Um, if there are things that you think, you know, little sparks of ideas that have um, come to mind whilst we've been talking today, um, you know, please do get in touch. We'd, we'd love to have a conversation. Um, and likewise as well, if there's, you know, we've, we've sort of presented there, it's been quite one-sided, I'm very aware of, this is the stuff that we do. We're really, really keen to hear if that, if that hits the mark for you at the end of the day, is this useful, is this valuable? And if it's, if there are other things we could and should be doing, please talk to us about it. Um, we're really keen to have those, have those conversations. Um, and at the end of the day, we're all in the same business of supporting cultural organisations to do what they do better, be better, get more audiences, develop. So, you know, we're, we're really keen to kind of make sure that we're um, kind of providing the best possible possible services we can really. Um, so please do talk to us, always up for a chat. Um, anyone that knows me knows I'm always up for a cup of tea and a chat. Um, probably spend too much time doing that, but hey, um, my details are there. Um, we'll, send, we'll send these around as well afterwards. Um, but yeah, please stay in touch.